right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a bunch of good news stuff for you today. It's going to be kind of an interesting day. It's Sunday, and eh, as per usual, there's not too much news. However, the first thing I want to talk about is the Grin head developer Ignotus Pavarel expresses disappointment in funding from the crypto industry. And this is, uh, you guys will see in a minute, this is a pretty awful article or not necessarily from the writer but um from the lead developer of grin and again you'll see why in a second here so grin's lead developer is disappointed by the way in which the crypto industry is shaping up fair enough but then it gets worse from here uh via an announced release on the official grin website the project's lead developer who is only known by his pseudonym ignotus pavarel uh Paverel, hmm, i don't know whatever uh said his, that his team was severely disappointed by the way in which the industry was shaping up around grin uh, grin was started with a as fair of a launch as possible for what's under our control. We did this for good reason. We believe in Grin's mission. Um, I completely disagree with that because there was $100 million VC investors and unbelievable amounts of GPU farms pre-set up for Grin. Uh, if anybody noticed that as soon as Grin launched, the hash rate was unbelievable and you basically couldn't get anything if you just had a few graphics cards or especially if you just had one. It was impossible. Now, that's kind of the way that things are going right now because there's tons of mining farms out in the world, more so than there was in 2018 and more so than there was in 2017 just because people have been accumulating for a long time now. So it's a completely different world. But uh, it was something fierce, let me just say that. Uh, so Pavero went on to say that he was quite disheartened by the way in which Michael Corder's recent fundraising campaign to devote a 100% of his time to Grin was still 90% off. Oh, boo-hoo. Uh, it, it's final mark. So at press time, Corder's campaign has been able to rope in a total of 4,660 uh, euros out of a envision target of 55,000 euros. So this was basically so that the lead developers of Grin uh, would be able to devote 100% of their time and essentially drop their day jobs. Um, so I I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that because, I mean, Bitcoin, uh, you know, never had to drop their day job for it. Nobody was paid for Bitcoin unless you count the Satoshi wallets and eh, nobody really knows about that. But anyway, so a lot of these coin developers are able to develop a good coin and not have to worry about funding like that. Nobody has to pay you to stop your day job. That would be like me saying, hey, if you guys don't give me Mr. Sotko, $55,000 in donations, what I'm going to have to do to you all is just spam ICO after ICO and referral links up in your face, right? Sorry, guys, right? Because you didn't give me $55,000. So, however, it should be pointed out that the aforementioned statistics don't take into consideration the extra 131 Ethereum, which is 12,000 uh, euro, and 1.14 uh, BTC, 3,400 euro that has also been raised in relation to the campaign. Um, and also, you have to notice that euros worth a little bit more than US dollars. So this 55,000 might be, I didn't even do the calculation. So let me just kind of do one of those. Um, 60, 65,000 US dollar. So he wanted 65,000, 60,000 some US dollar to um, just basically quit his day job uh, to do 100% uh, grin. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. Maybe you should have pre-mined some of your own coin. Uh, maybe you should have just uh, set up a GPU rig and mined your own coin right after it came out. Don't pre-mine, but just start pre-mining or just start mining afterwards and uh, make a few bucks. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so speaking about the current state of the ICO market, uh, market uh, Paverel, Paverel, I'm just going to call him Paverel, let's just go with that, made some astute observations which he believes can help crypto entrepreneurs who are trying to make their uh, mark on the burgeoning industry. Uh, on the subject, he noted, more scammy ICOs for more money and a lot less work, perhaps forcibly taking 20% of all rewards is the only way to get any contribution out of the mining industry. If greed feeding on itself is the only lesson, then this space truly deserves a really long and hard winter. Um, a lot more creativity is needed to research escape velocity and that won't happen if everyone's goal is just feeding off of it oh 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 what am i doing here what am i doing here playing that tiny 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 world's smallest violin right here 
bum 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 more so this guy whoever so this just basically t turned me off of grin completely uh, this developer is such a baby uh he wants fifty five thousand dollars or maybe he's going to take 20 percent of all rewards so he's basically saying i should have taken 20 percent of all rewards so i could get paid for this now i don't mind developers getting paid i never did um you know, like a small pre-mine, uh, 10%, any more than 10%, I feel is egregious, uh, but 10% pre-mine, even a 5% pre-mine would have been amazing on Grin for him and his work. Um, you know, and ICOs, I'm not, I'm, I'm like sort of 50-50 on because sure, developers do need to get paid, especially if you have a big crew, you do need to get paid. Now, $4 billion EOS ICO, that's insanely egregious and uh, no company needs to pay $4 billion to their employees. I'm not even sure if any in the world needs to pay $4 billion to their employees, even like Apple or Amazon or Microsoft. Uh, do they really have that many employees that they're paying $4 billion out a year? Maybe. But uh, again, that's like a fortune top 10 company kind of deal and uh you know you're just a developer that made a coin four billion dollars where did that money even go so again egregious but um you know now saying now being angry at your community for not giving you uh, 60,000 plus dollars plus the uh, 131 Ethereum and 1.414 BTC. Um, you're crazy. Uh, that's just awful. Uh, in closing on his recent blog entry, Peverell let it known, um, let it be known to the world that the Grin Project is in a position to profit infinitely more from the contributions of Michael Cordner than those made by any other single minor or financial entity. It now remains to see how future pans out for the firm. So essentially, he's just made Grin to make money. Uh, I think I think that in itself is is a little everybody needs to make money in this world but uh it's pretty clear at this point that um that the grin creator the developers decided to make this to make money uh plain and simple instead of like bitcoin um you know where the developers well, so we don't really still know anything about satoshi necessarily but uh develop bitcoin for the people say here's here here it is um uh, sure i mined some probably for testing and eh, maybe a little bit more than just for testing but okay fair enough and mine some but here it is to the world do what you guys want to do with it i'm out a couple years later, I'm out. I'm not going to profit off this. I'm not going to do anything. Um, and a lot of developers are like that. But if you make a currency just to be paid, um, you know, it really says something about your project. It really does. Uh, it's a, a very interesting uh, take on Grin. So moving on to the main uh, article here, I want to start off by talking about Quadrica CX. So the exchange that um, is in Canada and the um, the CEO died uh, apparently from Crohn's disease, which kills virtually no one. Um, Crohn's gives you a tummy ache. That's kind of what it does. Um, you get uh, that's about it. Um, and it's fully treatable. And maybe you live slightly less longer than a healthier person. But uh, for the most part, you don't just die randomly from Crohn's. I'm not a doctor, but uh, looking it up, uh, nothing too nothing too bad about uh, Crohn's disease other than the fact that you might need to go to the bathroom more often or something like that. Anyway, so the story goes is that uh, this guy ran a, a uh, exchange from his laptop, from his house. Wherever he went, he brought this laptop with him. That was the exchange. You might be like, well, no, it wasn't like a corporate center. Absolutely not. It was a man with a laptop with $190 million plus dollars on this exchange, probably way more than that over time. He's sick with Crohn's and he just marries his wife. Then he makes a will saying that when he dies, $100,000 will go to his dogs so that they are taken care of and other willed items will go out as well. So he makes this will, he marries, then days later he travels to India to work on a orphanage in India. Okay, fair enough. Then he goes there and dies from Crohn's. Then a death certificate goes to Canada from Indian doctors. There is no body. There are no images. There are no news of a rich white man dying in India while working on an orphanage uh, or anything like that. Then we see a Canadian death certificate, which uh, looks like it was made 
by just about anybody, to be totally honest, not that I'm a big uh, knowledgeable about death certificates. It's looking a little weird. Now that he is dead, he was the sole uh, owner of all the private keys and his laptop is encrypted. So now nobody can get to the $190 million that is stuck on the exchange and therefore nobody can get their funds off of the exchange because it is all in cold storage on his laptop which could have easily crashed because it's a laptop and then hundreds of millions of dollars. So th th you, you see what I mean? This story makes no sense whatsoever. I talked about it yesterday and then uh, now everybody is starting to really question that because all of that is incredibly questionable. You're sick, so you go to India, uh, a notoriously, uh, don't mean to say anything wrong about India because I do have a friend that literally lives in India, but uh, let's just say the, the, the healthcare in India is mm, pretty, pretty low okay eh. and you go there you're working on an orphanage and then you die just after you made a will and married and it, it's very very weird <clears throat> So Jesse Powell, the CEO of Kraken, says, We have thousands of wallets, addresses known to belong to Quadrica Coin, and are investigating the bizarre and frankly unbelievable story of the founder's death and lost keys. I'm normally, normally calling for subpoenas, but if uh, the police are looking into this, contact Kraken. So that means that they have thousands of wallets uh, known to belong to Quadrica. Um, so it's often said that Quadrica was essentially... Um, holding in cold storage their coins on kraken or a lot of their uh a lot of their coins were held on kraken for some reason and not on quadrica so there's thousands of wallet addresses that belong to quadrica that for some reason have coins on kraken uh that belong to quadrica that were made starting from there so that's really weird moving on uh facts about uh gerald cotton <clears throat> Uh, CEO, who is the, was the CEO of Quadrica, by the way, CEO of disease of Crohn's disease, goes to India for humanitarian reasons, a country not known for water quality or medicine, but very high corruption if one might need a death certificate unrelated, uh, dies from disease, which doesn't kill like the, la the vast majority of the time with only a slightly reduced lifespan. Number four, announces months later uh, by wife no one knew about. So no one knew that he had a wife. Uh, which is okay, I guess. Uh, so no one knew that he had a wife, and he died in December, and it's just now being announced that he passed away. So th the these coins have been locked up for a long time. Also, Quadriga has had uh, very bad um, monetary problems as well uh, just before this. So he basically married, then died. A month later, they start talking about all the monetary problems and how they just can't get the crypto out. Uh, number five. CEO with uh, severe chronic disease had the only access to cold wallets. And number six, doesn't reveal cold wallets to verify, likely because they will be drained. So that's one thing that Quadrica hasn't done. They haven't revealed the cold wallets. If they would, we could just easily bring up a block explorer and see, hey, there is all the coins, right? So that's the conspiracy goes out the window at that point. If you would just reveal what the cold wallets are. Um, and then we would see, hey, there's $190 million total in these wallets. Nobody ever moved them. There's no conspiracy. The guy just died, and we, we, we just can't get the, the, the coins out just yet. Um, but they refuse to do that. Uh, so here's another one, Quadrica Litecoin cold wallet list and analysis. So this is apparently some of the, the cold wallet list, or at least what people have dug up. So this isn't confirmed, but this is what people believe to be uh, the wallets of these cold. And he actually goes through the... Um, the list of, of what the steps that he took into to find these wallets. Um, so it's actually pretty in depth, uh, pretty detailed. So you can see that one wallet has 7,860 Litecoin, one wallet has 60,000 Litecoin, one wallet has 195, and one wallet has 86,000. We can click on some of these and see if it decides to bring them up. So the balance of this one is 86,000, um, and this one is. Uh, so, so a lot of these are actually moving too. There's a lot of transactions coming out of these. So, like this one has a total of uh, basically like I can't, I can barely read that because they cross over for some reason. 22 million total Litecoin sent. Uh, this one now has zero balance, um, and it received two million Litecoin sent, two million and six hundred ten thousand exactly, and now has zero balance. Uh, so you can see that these wallets are are some of them are being drained. Uh, they are moving. And um, 
so it's it's interesting to to see like are these the cold wallets or not and they appear to be moving so this is a very this is a very weird thing um so here's another um reddit post did quadrica ceo exit scam by faking his own death in india apparently there's a whole industry in india that provides fake doctor's notes and fake death certificates to tourists and you guys can look at these i i opened these links um earlier it's how to get a fake doctor's note in india how to buy your own death certificate in india uh, want a fake death certificate go to india times of india and you can go there and you can get a fake death certificate as long as you pay some money so here's a story Businessmen, uh, this is not the same businessman, mind you, so we can't really necessarily correlate this, but an interesting read. Uh, businessman jailed for faking his own brain fever, fever death in India to pocket one million pounds in life insurance to clear his family's mounting debts. Uh, so Sanjay Kumar, 45, claimed he had died and had been cremated in Delhi, India. And same thing with uh, uh, this CEO of uh, So Cotton has been cremated as well, apparently. So he was cremated in Delhi, India, but Kumar was alive in India, obtaining a fake death certificate and cremation certificate. Kumar, born in India, but a British citizen with dual nationality, flew to Delhi on a business trip on the 3rd of November, 2011. He later emailed his wife, Anju Kumar, 46, uh, telling her he had fallen seriously ill and had been taken to the hospital. By the 26th of November, uh, mother of three, Mrs. Kumar received an email uh, informing her that Sanjay had been killed by a brain fever and cremated. Uh, and this is the story here because he wanted to clear his uh, one, one million life insurance to clear his family's mounting debts. And then it's followed by, has anyone actually seen the CEO's body? Um, not that uh, we would want to, but uh, some proof of this would be interesting. Now, and when anybody else dies, we don't need to make a conspiracy about it. But when there's $190 million, $190 million locked up, I think the police need to actually investigate, was this guy actually dead? Because there, there comes a point when there's a lot of users' funds, $190 million of them, one of the largest Canadian exchanges, if not the largest, uh, which was, again, let me reiterate, run by a man with a laptop. That's it, in his house, in his basement. Uh, so very interesting. Uh, so this article is uh, very interesting. I probably won't read this. I'll probably skip around just a little bit. But Canadian cryptocurrency exchange Quadrica is apparently missing $190 million in funds. Uh, the company has been unable to locate and access about $190 million worth of crypto, which includes Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So he was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at age 24 and passed away. He was 30. So most people that are 30 do not pass away from Crohn's. It's just like you get tummy aches. Let me just say, you get you get tummy aches if you got Crohn's. Like you don't just die. Um, I think there was one reported case, like uh, a 29 year old man suddenly died from Crohn's, but uh, you, you just don't. It doesn't work like that. Uh, and passed away due to complications from the condition while traveling to India of all things. <clears throat> so you're basically you're you got constant diarrhea and constant stomach aches, but you're going to travel to India and build an orphanage. Okay. All right. So again, I'm trying to be not biased here, but uh, it's just everything about this story is just so unbelievable. And if it turns out to be absolutely true that he did die and that they're just locked up, uh, you know, screw me, screw everybody. Right. Oh, well, but uh, still, uh, uh, you know, the truth is stranger than fiction, you know, uh, Quadrica, uh, which un which launched in 2013, kept the majority of its cryptocurrency in what's known as cold wallets, essentially an offline storage system. Um, so Mr. Cotton uh, had the sole responsibility for handling the funds and held the digital keys to access the wallets, which the company attempted to find after his death. Uh, Mr. Cotton mostly ran the business from his own fr uh, on his own from his laptop, wherever he happened to be, which was typically in a house, which he shared with his wife, uh, who nobody knew about till like two days after he died. So Mr. Cotton's primary laptop is encrypted. According to an affidavit filed by his widow, Jennifer Robertson, uh, I do not know the password or recovery key. Okay, so it's nobody, okay, nobody wrote that down or anything. Nobody wanted to put that in a safe, in a, in a safer place than a laptop. What if that laptop just falls off your lap? What if you fall asleep and it, it like falls and, and maybe you shatter the hard drive or something, even though I've had laptops fall and, you know, they're, they're usually fine. But let's just say that something happened to this laptop. Uh, what if it was stolen? What if somebody like kicked in his door and, and is like, hey, give me your laptop. And, it, you know, they steal his laptop. Uh, how do you get all these funds back? This seems grossly incompetence, gross incompetence that just a laptop could, could just, could, what if 
you just pressed a button one day and it just didn't work? What if it just fried? You know what I mean? It's, it's just... So despite repeated and diligent searches, I have not been able to find them written down anywhere. She also searched their home and other properties for any company documents, but came up empty. Mrs. Robertson hired an outside tech expert to help hack into Jerry's computers in addition to an encrypted USB key. The expert had some luck retrieving a few digital coins and some information from Cotton's cell phones and another computer, but the effort has been mostly unsuccessful. Uh, Ernst and Young argued in its report that creditor protection is necessary to permit an investigation into the missing coins. Creditor protection, you know what creditor protection is? Protection against you from you. You suing them. That's what creditor protection is, uh, basically. Um, so um, determine the amount of owing to users, noting that uh, accounting systems either do not exist or are not capable of recording or producing even the most basic of accounting summaries. Uh, so again, it's just like this is the worst exchange ever. And it was like the, Canada's biggest exchange. And it's absolutely, the, and I'm not ripping on Canada here because I know somebody's going to be like, oh, you're ripping on Canada. No, I don't care. Uh, but this is just the worst exchange ever. And it was ran, ran by one man with a laptop. Uh, if approved as a monitor, the company will also determine if a sale of Quadrica is possible. Yeah, sell the company, you know what I mean? I'm sure everybody will want to come back to it. So it's the equivalent of walking around with millions of dollars of cash on you at all times. Uh, Mr. Cotton was diligent in life and other areas. He signed a will on November 27th, less than two weeks before he died. Very convenient. Uh, he appointed Miss Robertson as uh, the executor of his estate and outlined the distribution of his assets, including an airplane, property in British Columbia, Nova Scotia, two pet chihuahuas named Nitro and Gully, along with $100,000 for their care for two chihuahuas, literally two chihuahuas. Um, so, yeah, sure, signing a will two weeks before you die is a usual thing, like if you're really sick, but not going to India to build an orphanage when you're really sick, that sounds very shady. If you're that sick that you feel like you need to make a will, you're probably not going to fly to India to make an orphanage before you die. You're probably going to spend it with your two chihuahuas and your wife and your family. Not go to India where, uh, quite frankly, there's p very poor water and food quality um, that is just the absolute worst case scenario for somebody with Crohn's. Absolutely the worst case scenario for somebody with Crohn's period. So another portion of Quadrica's funds tied up in third-party payment processors and um, users have been complaining over the course of the past year about difficulties withdrawing money. Uh, they've had problems with banks. They have problems with money. And now we come to find they can't get the, they can't get the coins off. And nobody's going to give us the cold wallet address from the exchange uh, which somebody, some employee of the exchange, if it's just Mr. Cotton, then it's just the worst, absolutely worst exchange ever created, ever, ever created in the history of mankind so far. Um, absolutely the worst. There has to be, there has to be some kind of rule against that with one person with a laptop running an exchange. Um, then uh, there, there's big problems. So if there's any other employees, then they should know the uh, public key of the wallets. And if they do, then they can just give them to the public, which is no problem, give them to the public so everybody can see how much money is in those cold wallets. If there's $180 million or approximate um, and no movements after his death, because movements after his death would be a problem, uh, but approximately $180 million, then everything's fine. They, they never moved, and we just have to work diligently on getting uh, it decrypted so that we can move those back to everybody, um, and everybody can withdraw. So um, that's about all I have on that, and about all I've found so far. So again, no concrete proof. Yet, at the same time, the story is, uh, again, stranger than fiction. Uh, a very sick man makes a will, marries, uh, gives $100,000 to his chihuahuas, flies to India while sick with Crohn's, which is the, like one of the worst water quality, probably food quality virtually in the world. Uh, you guys ever see the Ganges? Just look up the Ganges, and uh, then you'll go, oh, okay, I know what Mr. Sock was talking about. So just, just look up the Ganges. That's all. Um, and he's going to build an orphanage that nobody knew about. He dies there. There are no news articles, no body pictures, no pictures of the death, no cremation, and just a really terrible death certificate, which you can just buy in India, and nobody else has access to this. So um, 
I think we're going to see a lot more about this. I'm excited to see what comes out of this. Um, maybe he did die. So let me just play devil's advocate. Maybe maybe this guy did die. Maybe he was just trying to do some humanitarian work before he, he would die, even though nobody dies to crones. I don't understand. Nobody dies to crones. It just doesn't, doesn't happen. Crones doesn't kill you. Something else from crones kills you, right? And if you were that sick, you wouldn't go to India, right? So if you went to India and got sick and food poisoning, the food poisoning killed you, not the crones. Crones just doesn't kill you. It just it gives you stomach aches. Like, it makes your life kind of miserable, but like, come on. It's just so... I can't even play devil's advocate. And, and he dies, okay, it's while trying to do humanitarian work with crones. I can't stop. Um, then he gets shipped back, and nobody has access to the key, so now we need to de uh, decrypt his laptop to get these coins back. I never had any money on this exchange, so, I mean, no problem for me, but apparently a lot of people did. $180 million. So... Um, you know, and on the other side, uh, this guy went to India to get a fake death certificate to basically fake his death. And uh, this money uh, is probably pouring out or will pour out of these cold wallets at some point, And people will probably see it eventually. So I will keep up on this and uh, try to find more information about this eventually. Uh, no coin market cap today. Uh, we're going down a little bit. But, um, you know, nothing that you guys can't check out. I forgot to bring it up, so I'm not going to really do it today. But that's all I have for you guys. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more information later on about this when I happen to uh, scour Reddits and things like that. Um, make sure you guys like the video. That helps me out a lot. It's very easy to do. You just go clickety-clickety-clack. Um, and my social media is in the description below. Uh, my Steam, my Twitter, my Twitch. Give me a follow on all three of those if you happen to get the chance. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And as usual, I will see you guys next time.